Brothers and sisters of Christ, this is an urgent message that I need you to watch all the way because the Lord has really shown me something that I feel a lot of the churches and a lot of different pastors and even some YouTubers are not preaching and that they're hiding away from. And yet this is something that is so, so serious. So if you're watching this, it's not by accident. If the Spirit of God brought you here, then I encourage you to continue watching through this message because today we're going to get very, very deep into the Word of God and we're really going to talk about something that is a huge problem in the church. And before I begin this message, I just want to talk about how in these last days that we're living in, how sexualized the generation that we live in is. Because of how sexualized our generation is, it's almost as if people have become numb to it. One thing I also wanna address is the huge pornography issue that is going on in our country. And it's just crazy because when you think about it, right, millions of people view this site. So everyone who watches this, has committed a sin. It's getting to the point where in this world that we live in, sexual morality has just become normal. I want to give you guys a statistic about something that really shocked me when I read it, and it really just grieved my heart to see how many people in the church are affected by this. According to Craig Gosho, 64% of Christian men and 15% of Christian women admit to viewing porn more. And guys, this is a huge problem that is going on within the church. And I'm just going to get straight into the word because I need you guys to see these scriptures. When I saw these scriptures, it really just shocked me because these are things I wasn't even hearing at church. And I really believe that the Lord brought you to this message so that you can hear the truth and so that you can hear how serious sexual morality and sexual sin is to God. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, no adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revivalists, no exhortationers will inherit the kingdom of God. Before I continue, I just want to go back. The word of God is teaching us that people who are fornicators, idolaters, homosexuals, thieves, all these people who make a practice, who partake and indulge and live a lifestyle of these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. If we continue at the end of verse 13, it says, but you can't say that our bodies were made for sexual morality. They were made for the Lord and the Lord cares about our bodies. See, our bodies were made so that we can honor and that we can worship the Lord. God will raise us from the dead by his power just as he raised the Lord from the dead. Do you not realize that our bodies are actually parts of Christ? See, when we accept Christ into our life as our Lord and Savior, our bodies become a part of Christ. Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And do you not realize that if a man joins himself to a prostitute, he becomes one body with her? So sex isn't just a physical thing. We need to understand that sex is a spiritual thing and that when someone has sex with a person, they become one body with them. Scriptures say the two are united in one, but the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with them. Run from sexual sin. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one. It's just crazy because there's so many people who will preach and teach you that all sins are the same, but the Bible literally teaches us that certain sins do lead to death. And the Bible says run from sexual morality. See, when the Bible is telling us to run from something or to flee, it's not giving us a suggestion. It's saying turn away, run from it. No other sin so clearly affects the body as this one. For as sexual morality is a sin against your own body. Sexual morality is something where you actually end up sinning against your own body. And do you not realize that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? See, God doesn't want to live in man-made temples. God wants to live in his creation. And it says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who was given to us by God. So we do not belong to ourselves. So when we indulge in, in sexual morality, not only are we sitting against the Lord, but we are also sitting against ourselves and our own body. And it says that God brought us with a high price, so we must honor God with our body. Sexual morality includes fornication, it includes pornography, it includes homosexuality. Sex is a covenant that was made by God that is supposed to happen between marriage where a man and a woman come together and become one. But our generation has fun and takes part and enjoys becoming one with each other. See, it just really grieves me because there's so many people out in this world who are just becoming one with each other. They're going from partner to partner to becoming one, to becoming one, to becoming one. And then people wonder why I can't get this person out of my head. People wonder why they start feeling emotionally soul tied to these people. And soul ties are a real thing. Matthew 19 verse four, Jesus says, haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied. They recorded that from the beginning, God made them male and female. And he said, this explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united in one. Since they are no longer two but one, let no one split apart what God has joined together. In the beginning of time, when God created the covenant in Genesis 2.22, it says, then the Lord God made a woman from the rib 
and he brought her to the man at last the man explained this one is from my bone and flesh from flesh she will be called woman because she was taken from man this explains why a man leaves his father and is joined to his wife and the two are united to become one and guys, I'm just going to keep on going into the scriptures because I want you guys to see how serious and how severe and how much the Bible warns about fleeing and running from sexual immorality. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the passion of the lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. Galatians 5 verse 19, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfishness, ambitions, dissensions, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. And it's saying that if you practice in fornication, if you make it your lifestyle, it's saying that you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Ephesians 5 verse 5 says, for this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. See, I know these scriptures might be tough, but I have to show you guys the truth that is saying that fornicators, unclean people, covetous, idolaters have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. And God is very serious about us fleeing and running and abstaining from sexual morality. Revelation 21 verse 8. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all lives shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and burning soul, which is the second death. <sighs> Guys, the Lord is not playing when it comes to sexual sin. Guys, I know God is wanting me to wake up the nation of young men and women and let them know that just because the world says that sex is okay, just because the music videos, just because the media, just because the movies, just because social media says that it's okay does not mean it's actually okay. And verse Corinthians 10, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted but beyond what you are able. But with temptation will also make the way of escape. And guys, if you're struggling with sexual morality, I want to let you guys know that there's freedom and that you don't have to be a slave to your sin because who the Son sets free is free indeed. So when you are made a new creation in Christ, you are no longer a slave to sin. Proverbs 4.23 says, Guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. So guys, if you're struggling with sexual morality because this is something that I struggled with for some of my life, the Lord will help you and the Lord is faithful to free you, but you have to make that decision to limit the things that you you see you have to make that decision to repent and come before God and actually want to stop not just say it and go back but actually want to stop and guys if you're really struggling with sexual morality try fasting try praying try reading your word try being careful about what you see be careful about the music you listen to be careful about what comes into your eyes I believe I think it's in Matthew Jesus talks about how like our eyes are lamp onto our body so we have to be careful the kind of things that we see I just want to pray for you guys real quick for anyone who's struggling because I feel that there's someone who's watching this who feels defeated who feels that there's no hope but there is hope there is hope in Jesus and he loves you and he will help you and he will forgive you so I just want to pray real quick and God I pray Lord for anyone watching this father I come against any spirit of lust in the name of Jesus Christ that is holding anyone captive I pray Lord whoever's watching this be free behind the screen whoever's behind the screen be free in the name of Jesus Lord I pray Lord, that you would help Lord wash and renew us Lord and just make us pure Lord and holy and help us to just honor our body and father Lord I pray Lord that you would just help us Lord to be able to resist the devil James 4 7 says that if we resist the devil that he and submit to you God that he shall flee so father we love you and we thank you in Jesus name I pray Amen. So I hope this message really opened your eyes and really let you understand that the Lord is very serious about sexual morality and he's trying to warn the church that we need to be pure. We need to abstain from sexual morality. Are we going to face temptation? Is temptation always going to be there? Yes. But what comes down to it is dealing with the temptation and how when you get a lustful thought, cast it down in the name of Jesus. I believe it's 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5. That talks about taking captive every thought and making it obedient to Christ. So when you get a lustful thought, cast it down. Say, I rebuke the spirit of lust in the name of Jesus Christ. Cast it down. Cast it down because the enemy is always going to be trying to tempt us. I hope this video helped. I love you guys so much. And I really just want all each and every single one of you to really get this thing right. Because we only have one life. And our body is the temple of God. And we are supposed to worship a God both in spirit and truth. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Overflow in this place.